dream. Ahem. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to tell you the story of the Thousand Year Door. An awfully long time ago, in a strange and far off land, a big, bustling town thrived. It was a town where all people lived very happy lives, and it was said that the town was very prosperous. But one day, tragedy befell this blessed place. A great cataclysm struck the town and its people. Darkness filled the skies and the earth roared and shook. It was as if the very world had come to a violent end, and in but a single night, the town sank into the depths of the earth. Many moons rose and set. Stories of the town passed into the pages of fairy tales, and when the town's site no longer held relics of the past, people gathered at that spot and built a new town. But word soon spread among the people who moved in, that an ancient city lay deep underground, and that a magnificent treasure rested there. Indeed. This is the tale of the fabled treasure of Rogueport. Yes, this is where it begins. In the sea town of Rogueport, the tale of the quest for the legendary treasure and the thousand year door starts here. Finally, I have a minute without Toad's worth watching over me. He's so paranoid. I come all the way here on holiday, only to be stuck with Toadsworth. It's so stifling. Once in a while, I'd like the chance to look around on my own and see what I want. Um, but now that I'm doing it all, I see that this town has a very, um, distinct flavor. Oh, Missy. Missy. Oh! Do you mean me? Yes, you, Missy. Why don't you buy something? I have a wide assortment of knickknacks and doodads. Oh, well, um... Oh! Well, that's a pretty box. What's inside it? It is said that this box holds a map that shows where a legendary treasure sleeps. But the box has a magical lock on it that will only open for a pure and noble heart. As you can see, it won't so much as budge if one such as myself touches it. Oh, I know. If the box will open for you, Missy, then you may have whatever is inside. I am sure that whatever is in there would be of no use to someone like me. So, Missy, take this box in your hands and see what happens. Um, alright. What's the harm? I'll try to open it. Let's play Thousand Year Door! Good morning, everybody! It's Midnight and Beyond! Welcome to my Let's Play of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door for the Nintendo GameCube! Oh my stinking god! I don't think a game like this needs any introduction. It's one of the most legendary and beloved video games of all time, and of course, it's one of my absolute favorites. So let's stop diddly daddling and go ahead and start our adventure! Well, I know who's going to be the worthy sacrifice of this Let's Play. Now that that's taken care of and out of the way, let's go ahead to name our file. I wonder if the text looks just as bad as it did back in the first game, but yes, I've been so excited to Let's Play this game. Oh my stinking god, like, it's been so stinking long since I actually played it, and I absolutely adore it, and... There's just going to be so much I want to go over and so much I have to talk about, but I gotta go ahead and actually get into the adventure before we start going over everything that I have planned for this LP. It's gonna be a big one, it's gonna be a spectacular one, I'm excited to play it and I hope you all are excited to see what I have in store for you. And hooray, it looks like they got spacing right over the past however many years it's been since the previous Paper Mario game.
This doesn't seem familiar in the absolute slightest, except it looks a lot nicer and shinier. A lot nicer, I wonder if that's a sense. Oh my god, it's Park Harry, I'm your biggest fan. I saw you from the first game and you were a party member of the other game. Fail call. Bye Park Harry, I'll miss you. I remember all the good times we had together with Goombario and Koops and uh, Bombay and wah, and uh, Sushi and Lackalester and uh, all the other guys. And I don't even know who this guy is, but I don't really care, but I, I miss you, Lack. Okay. Hey bro, check it out, I let the Flim Princess Peach alive for you. This, again, does not seem familiar in the absolute slightest. I'll just read it to you, how's that, that sound? Ahem, now let's see here. Hello there, Mario. I'm now on holiday, traveling in the Mushroom Kingdom. In my travels, I came into a possession of a mystical map. A treasure map, actually. It was inside a box I got from an old merchant in a town called Rogueport. But since it would be too difficult for me to try to go find the treasure all by myself, I thought that you could help me hunt for it. You will, of course, won't you? I've included the map with this letter, so please bring it with you when you come. I'll meet you at Rogueport. That means you must come. Peach. Wow, not even a love or a from or a sincerely or a see a soon Pikachu. I know that doesn't rhyme, but whatever. What do you know? It's true. There's a weathered old map here in the letter. Check it out. Uh. Oh, yes. My god, it has been far too long since I stinking played this game. I'm glad to be back in the land of Paper Mario. And we get a title screen a lot earlier than in the prologue of the previous game, so I guess that means the episode's over, right guys? Now nah, we'll give you a bit of a longer episode. Prologue! A rogue's welcome! Excuse me, sir. Please wake up, sir. The town you'd been speaking of has come into view. Look, that's Rogueport. Oh! You see, we'll arrive shortly. Please prepare to disembark. And of course, in true Paper Mario fashion, Luigi was not invited on this trip because he does not deserve to. And oh my god, I missed this song. I must apologize, sir. Our arrival was delayed just a bit by rough weather. Are you quite sure you want to disembark here? I did tell you all about the sordid tales about Rogueport on your way here, did I not? What's that? I'm sorry? You say there's a princess waiting here for you? Is that so? Er, of course, sir. Well, if that's what you think, then I won't stop you. But, uh, you be careful, sir. Don't say I didn't warn you. And it just flips in the other direction to get turned around. Very, very funny. Here we are in Rogueport. Now, just right off the bat, you have kind of an interesting feel on the town, sort of like what Peach said in the intro. It's very, uh, crummy looking, just like not the most upbeat sort of area. And that's sort of what I like about this game is that it takes sort of a darker twist, not like super dark and edgy and mature and all that jazz, but like it's a lot more rough and rugged than you'd expect from most Paper Mario games. This is our main overworld area and it's just like a very run down town and filled with a bunch of ruffians and everything like that. So normally like in the first Paper Mario game, we have all the stinking toads greeting us at Peach's Castle being like, oh Mario, I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, da, 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 da. But how about the first stinking person we talk to in this new town? What could they possibly have to say to us? Oi, welcome to Rogueport. Bit of a nasty place, eh? You got guts coming here. You look a bit green, so have a wee bit of advice on me. Hit that save block to save. Because the thing about life is, you never know when you're gonna kick the old bucket. Okay, I guess that was sort of helpful, telling us how to save the save blocks return from the first Paper Mario game. Of course, you just hit it and you save. What do you want, pal? Huh? A princess in a pink dress? I ain't seen nothing like that, no? I'd remember a princess, probably. What do you want... Why do you want this chick anyway, pal? Are you money? Or is she your girlfriend? 
So that's kind of interesting. A Toad that doesn't know who Peach is and also doesn't know who Mario is. That's sort of the thing I love about this game is that normally everyone's always singing high praises about Mario, but in this world, he's just a regular dude. No one really cares about him or knows who he is. And we'll see more about that as time goes on. But before we actually get into a story progression, there is something that I want to point out real quick. If this is your first time experiencing Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, uh, well, first off, I appreciate you wanting to experience it through my Let's Play. It does mean a lot to me, though. The point of Let's Plays is to experience it on your own by encouraging you to play the games, by like having you enjoy the first few episodes and then go out and play the game for yourself and then come back here and watch it if you need help getting through a certain area or if you have already finished the game you want to see how I play through it. But the reason I'm telling you this is because I want to have this Let's Play be very, very special in a lot of different ways. And something that I did with my Paper Mario Let's Play was through voice acting. Now, I know that's not anything new on my channel. I've done voice acting for several LPs in the past, but the thing I did with my Paper Mario Let's Play is that the voice acting wasn't just in the finale. I had every single party member fully voice acted from beginning to end. And in the original Paper Mario game, that was pretty manageable and easy to do because there wasn't that much talking with the party members. Basically, after they joined your party, they were done speaking for the rest of the game. But this game is very different. They continue talking a lot. There's a lot of stinking dialogue in this game, and your party is a lot more interactive with the story and with Mario in general. So there's going to be a lot of dialogue and basically it's going to have a lot of guest appearances with special guest voice actors. The reason I'm telling you this is that you may not fully realize that a character is going to join your party when we first meet them. So if you're experiencing this for the first time, if you basically if you see a character that's voice acted by someone other than me, that means that they're going to be a party member. And if that is something that you don't want to be spoiled for you, then I would recommend playing the game for yourself before watching this Let's Play because there are certain characters in this game that I think the best part about the game was finding out that they were going to be a party member or something like that. So for that reason, I'm just telling you right now, if you don't want to get spoiled on that, please don't watch this LP because the voice acting will spoil it for you. If you don't mind that, however, then continue on with the video and enjoy the Let's Play as I have it laid out for you. And apparently my explanation was so incredibly boring that it put Mario to sleep right at the beginning of the episode. So let's go ahead and change that and move forward. Hey, what do you want? Get away from me, freak! Oh, come off of you, airhead. I know it's tough for you, but don't play dumb with me. I've seen you walking around town asking for information about the crystal stars. Well, now I'm doing the asking, so be a good girl and tell us what you know right now. Never! I don't have anything to say to you creeps. Ugh. I suppose it wouldn't be right if a sassy little lassie like you made with an untimely demise. Buh, 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 ha, ha. Boys, we're taking this firebrand to our fortress. As you command, Lord Crump, we're on it. No, stop right there, weirdos. I'll scream, really. Looks like a job for the one and only Super Mario. Let's -a go. Like I'd go anywhere with smelly lunatics like you. <laughs> Not likely. What? What do you well, think you're doing here, chump? You think you could screw up my plans? Oh, me? I'm a just a walking by. God, it's always something. Looks like I'm going to have to give you a little taste of the old grump bubble. Already off to our first battle. Can't flee this fight, as you would expect. Battle time, Mr. Man. Just find a way to beat this freak of the week, okay? Don't sweat the details. Just jump on him and hit him with your hammer. So yes, we actually start with the hammer in this game, and we don't have like a big tutorial to explain us how to jump, how to do our action commands and all that jazz. If you play the first Paper Mario game, you should be able to jump right into this one quite literally, because the action commands and the hammer are unlocked to you right off the bat. So. I'll just explain to you, if you, in case you haven't played that game before, instead of just pressing the A button to have Mario do a jump attack, you're going to want to have him jump on the enemy and like press the A button as soon as he jumps on it, then Mario will be able to do a double jump, do that again, you'll be able to do extra damage. It is very, very important. So we're going to go ahead and do that. One, a two. Sweet! You know that hurt. Wow, I gotta say, you're tougher than you look. Keep it up and you'll beat him in no time. Now he's going to go and do an attack on us. Okay, we got one damage to do us. If you remember from the previous game as well, if you press the A button at just the right time, you will be able to do a guard attack. The guard makes it so you don't have to uh, you reduce the amount of damage you'll take from an enemy attack. But there's a bit of a different way of guarding that I will hopefully show off in the next time he goes uh, and does his attack. Right now, let's go ahead and do the hammer. All you gotta do is hold down the 
left stick uh, as opposed to the other stick. Well, I guess there is another stick, but hold down the control stick to the left and release when the star lights up. As for the stylish thing, I'll get into that in quite a bit. I'm just getting way ahead of it myself, and apparently I get in trouble for getting ahead of myself because the background hurt me. You've got him on the ropes! Come on! Keep wailing on him! You got him against the ropes! And I didn't successfully guard against that either. So, the stylish command, as you saw, it is a special sort of action command that doesn't actually do extra damage, but it gives you sort of special thingies later on. So just sort of pay attention to when the uh, the stylish thing pops up. That's basically when you're gonna wanna press the A button. For the hammer, it's basically, you press the A button as soon as he whacks the hammer down on the enemy, and then Mario will do the backflip, press A again when he lands on the ground, and that's when you wanna do the stylish for that. As for the jump, basically press the A button whenever Mario's in the air once his jump has begun. A, 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 A. That's how you're gonna do the double stylish, and he is done. You did it, you did it, yes! And you got star points. Yeah, I bet you know, but you get these things called star points when you win battles. When you get a hundred points, you'll go up a level. Don't forget that, okay? Our first battle in Paper Mario got us 20 star points, but in this game we get nine. How wonderful. Buh, buh, buh. <laughs> okay, you got a couple of decent shots and I'll give you that. But, unfortunately for you, that means... It's go time! Hello! Never before could so many polygons and sprites appear on the Nintendo 64, which is why this will move over to the Nintendo GameCube. Punish him! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Quick! This way! <sighs> what a bunch of loons! Let's just sneak out of here. What do you say? Oh, yeah. So we're gonna take her advice and head on out of here. Glad that not a single one of them notices that we're leaving. Uh -huh. Cease this nonsense! Stop! Where'd they go? Oh, uh, you, Johnson, did you see them? Did anyone? Apparently everyone is named Johnson. Oh, uh, crud, they bolted. And apparently we're just so far away that they can't be bothered to walk up the stairs to come and greet us. Wow! Mister! You totally saved me! Thanks! I have just got to give you a little reward. Bow chicka bow wow! My name's Goombella. I'm a student at the University of Goom. Nice to meet ya. So, uh... Who are you? It's a Mario! Mario? Wait, you mean... Like, that famous guy? Well... I can't believe I met you here! Cool. Anyway, no offense, but it looks like you just rolled into town yourself, right? Me? I already hate it here! There are freaks and weirdos everywhere! It's nasty! Sounds just like Connecticut. I mean, I know the place is called Rogueport, so I should have expected it, but sheesh, I'd never come to a place like this if it weren't for some legendary treasure here. Oh! What? You were looking for the legendary treasure too? Seriously? Whoa, 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 bucko! What you got there? Oh my gosh! It, isn't that a treasure map? You have to tell me where you got that! Princess Peach? What? Great hoggly boggly if it isn't Master Mario! Toadsworth Buddy, my favorite character. Not my favorite character, but like one of my favorite characters. I'm so happy he's in this game. Bit of a coincidence bumping into one another in this sort of place. Mohohoho. So tell me, Master Mario, what in the world brings you to this wretched little bug? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Ah, indeed? Princess Peach sent you a letter and a treasure map? And she told you she'd meet you here in Rogueport. Intriguing. You're asking me where Princess Peach is? Mmm, I was about to ask you that. We stopped in for town this is to acquire a spot of fuel for our ship, don't you know? I only took my eye off her for a moment, but as soon as I did, she vanished. What? You know how headstrong she is, Mario. I just assumed she'd be back momentarily. But at this point, I fear we must embrace the possibility that she may never return. I like how he's just used to it at this point. I've been at a loss as to what to do. I've been fraught with worry, I tell you. But I'm feeling better with you here, Master Mario. Surely we'll find her. Surely. 
But I know my place, Master Mario, and this is not it. I leave this task to you. Who, me? I believe I'll recline in the inn right over there and enjoy a spot of tea, perhaps. In fact, I highly recommend it, particularly if you find your HP or heart points running low. Just drop on in! Ho ho ho! Yes, anyway, a little rest there will fill all your HP. I must say, though, the rest of this town is a bit rough. Yes, rough indeed. Huff, I say. Huff, I say. Um, Princess Peach? Did he mean, like, Peach, the Mushroom Kingdom Princess? The princess who always gets nabbed by Bowser? The Koopa King? The one you rescue? Wait a sec. This is crazy! Princess Peach sent you that treasure map? Oh, yeah. Whoa. This is really intense. Well, where could she have gone then, do you think? You think maybe she got sick of waiting and went to find the treasure on her own? Hmm. Oh, oh, I know, Mario. Come with me. One of the professors is here researching that treasure. We'll show him your map. If we start looking for the treasure, then maybe we'll catch up to Princess Peach. Great. We're all good then. Let's go, Mario. Goombella joined your party. Of course, our first party member is a Goomba. Now, she's more or less a Goombario clone, but she has some unique features that make her a million times better, aside from her very sharp ton, as we saw before. Goombella's abilities, a primer. Primer, I just met her. Press X to get information about nearby people, places, and objects. This is Roadport Plaza. It's the center of town and the main business district. It's a crossroads where many people meet, including more than a few shady characters. Anytime you press X when there's no one around, I'll tell you about where we are. That's Goomba the Goomba. He's always complaining about being swindled or mugged. If you press X when there's somebody nearby, I'll tell you about him or her. So, did you get all that? Goombella can give you hints when she answers, so ask her for information often. And of course, Goombella can be quite helpful in battle too. She jumps in the air to attack enemies with a nasty head bonk. She can also look up enemy HP and weaknesses with her tattle ability. Winkity winkity, and yeah, she winks her pupil just like Yoshi. First up, we gotta go find my professor. Thing is, since I just got to town myself, I um, don't actually know where he lives. So keep an eye out. Here's what Professor Frankly looks like. I like how I could read her speech bubble and see what a person looks like. <laughs> so yes, another thing that you can see right here. Our party members have their own HP. Originally, it was that Mario was the only one who could get hit by enemies, but... But now our party members could take hits for us and actually not just be out of commission for a couple turns. They have HP of their own that you have to manage. We'll get more into that when we get into actual battles. And let me just say, like, no matter how many times I play this game, just seeing Rogueport for the first time and uh, just, I don't know, walking around everything, it makes it so, like, this game has not aged is what I'm trying to say. It has, n it has not aged, like, a day. It feels like something that's brand new and something that could be released today and still be mind-blowing. I love the look of it. It feels so just wide and expansive. The colors look great. It looks sharp and everything. I absolutely adore it, and I am so singing happy to be back here. So, what's the first thing that we should do here? Well, there's a shop right over there that we can go into if you want to. There's an inn, but how about we just go explore the town a bit, see what these people have to say. Freeze! You two, not another step. Don't come this way. Some complete jerk just bumped into me and made me lose a contact lens. I'm looking for it right now, so don't you dare move! You hear me? Whatever you do, do not move an inch! Not an inch, you hear? Well, guess this is where the LP ends. Thank you all for watching. This is Midnight and Beyond. I'll see you now. So, logically, if I were to just go back the exact way I came, I shouldn't have any problem with uh, stepping on a certain thing, and especially since that guy just walked onto screen and nothing happened to him when he walked through here. That should also logically mean that I won't mess anything up if I walk out of here, right? It forced me to go back down and jump directly on this thing in contact lens. Ah, idiot, you stepped on in my poor contact lens. I told you not to move, don't you stupid ears work? What were you thinking? This is your fault. Now I have to buy a new contact lens, but you're gonna pay for it. Compa compa compensate me, Mr. Clumsy. No, no. Fine, if that's your plan, then here's mine, you oaf. 
I'm gonna block the gate to the west side until you bring me a new contact lens. Yeah, she actually blocks this thing away for you. You cannot go into the west wing until you get her stinging contact lens. I recommend you do this right now. What you need to do is go into the shop right here. Unfortunately, they don't have contact lenses 24-7. You're gonna need to talk to this guy. Welcome, yes, welcome to the Toad Bros Bazaar. Now, I never knew if that was, like, supposed to be a mustache that he has, or if he just has, like, an open mouth where he's just like, oh, I never really knew. Eh, what's that? You want a contact lens, you say? Hmm, wait just a moment. Gee, fell, I'm sorry, but we don't have any in stock right now. Tough luck, I know. I can special order one right away for you, but it'll take a while. Check back soon, okay? Basically, you need to leave Rogueport and come back, and then I think the contact lens will appear, so... It's very much worth your time that you do it just right here and now, so you don't have to worry about it later. As for the items, pretty standard fare. I'll just explain them real quick. Mushroom heals 5 HP. Honey syrup uh, heals 5 FP. We'll get into what FP is later. Tasty tonic. It cures poison and other status ailments. Fire flower does fire damage to all the enemies on the field. Sleepy sheep uh, attempts to make all the enemies on the field fall asleep. And fright mask attempts to make all the enemies on the field run away. But if they run away, you don't get experience for them. Okay, that's simple enough. Let's get on out of here. Well, actually, one more thing I could tell you is that... Oh, wait, you're not going to tell me. Uh, you're not going to let me do it. I think you talked to this guy, and... Uh, there's a point system that he just said, so if you save up, save up enough points, you can get prizes, including some rare items. Find a list of the prizes posted in any shop, but uh, be sure to check it out. Uh, some promotion, you can explain it again. No. And can I go ahead and just see your thingy? Yeah, uh, that sounds very weird. So you can buy things here, you can sell them here, you can store them here. So if you have uh, not enough inventory space, you, you could store your items in here, which is very, very useful. And you could just check your points and withdraw and all that jazz. As for the prizes, I've actually never checked it before. Um, Mushroom, Ice Storm, Super Shroom, Thunder Rage, Shooting Star, Gold Bar, Life Shroom, Ultra Shroom, Jam and Jelly, and three Gold Bars. Oh boy, a lot of stinking things to go over, that's for sure. As for whether or not this will be a 100% playthrough of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, I'm going to attempt it. We'll get into what that means a bit later. In terms of the main story, obviously, we're going to go through that. And in terms of collectibles, like this star piece right here, there are 100 star pieces in the game. We are going to collect all of them. I did not collect all of them in my original Paper Mario LP, but this is a game that's very, very near and dear to my heart, so I would like to go ahead and try collecting every single one of them. That is the first one. We will be showing off every single one of those. As for other things, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll get into it when we get into it. I'm just, again, so ahead of myself because there's so many things I want to talk about, so many things I want to go over, but I'm so excited. I just want to go over right now, but I can't go over right now. I just have to actually play the game, but I actually do want to play the game, so I don't know why it's a bad thing that I, don't, that I have to play the game. I'm just so stinking excited. Sniff, sniff, you smell that? This smells like a profitable situation. Yes, indeedy. Looks like my star is finally starting to shine. Not that it's any of your business. Whatever that means, and I don't know what this guy's supposed to be. Professor Frankly? Actually, I think a guy by that name lives over on the east side. Good thing it's not on the west side, otherwise we wouldn't be able to progress through the game. Uh, this board right here. Turf war between the, the Pianta Syndicate and the Robos heating up, apparently. Uh, best stay indoors. I like how it has the explanation point saying it's heating up. APPARENTLY! <laughs> best stay indoors. Uh, also, I like how this game pr uh, predicted turf wars uh, long before it actually happened. And if you go back here, Graffiti Corner. I just saw the most beautiful, elegant princess in Rogueport. I think I'm smitten. Podley's best customer. Interesting. Now, the billboard actually changes after every chapter, which is kind of funny, so we're going to be sure to come back here and read it every time. Uh, as for the inn, we could go in here like Toadsworth said. We're not actually going to stay at the inn because I would like to save my money, and we don't really need it right now. We got all these characters that we could talk to, or characters that won't talk to us. Can't you take a hint, pal? Dot, dot, dot means scram. Don't talk to me. Yeah, just fill with a bunch of stinking jerks and stuff, and I feel like I'm gonna hate you in a million stinking years, but we're we'll get to that in a later time. But what we're gonna do is just go up here right now, and I like how the transition is just like it switches over like that. It looks really cool. I uh, got this water falling down. Uh, is the in? No, it's not free, because our coins came up. Five coins a night, not that bad, but I could live without it. Just gonna go over here now, and up here is open at 11 a.m. today. Apparently, it's not 11 a.m. today. <laughs> Uh, if you go over here, though, you can get a star piece right here. A lovely piece of a star! Just want to get all the star pieces that we can right now. Now that's taken care of, we can go over to the east side and feeling super awesome and epic and ready to start an adventure. Hey, by the way, Mario, have you saved yet? You see that save block in front of the inn? Since we're here, you ought to save now. Just jump up and hit the block to save, okay? What if I don't want to save? I just want to go through here. Like, come on, Gumbelli, I think you're just worrying too much. What's the worst that could possibly happen? Oops, pardon me, sucker! Hey! What's your beef, pal? Yeah, 
I'm talking to you. Mario, you gotta wake up. That guy just stole half of your coins. Mamma mia. That is so lame. Oh, I hate this town. Now, some of you may think that a good idea would be to spend all your money before coming through here so that you'll have less coins for him to steal. But no, you can actually get those coins back, but only if you go after him right here and now. If you try doing it at a later point, it will not work. So, what you're going to want to do is go into this back alley, which I ever so conveniently didn't explore yet, because I knew it would be coming back here. It's as if I played this game before. And if you go in this house, you can see he's just hanging out in here. Oops! Uh, fancy meeting you here. You're pretty darn persistent, buddy. What a pain. Fine, fine, okay, you got me. I'll give you the coins back here. And we get our money back. Very, very nice. And what's even nicer is you go back here and there's another star piece. First episode, we already got three stinking star pieces. And a lot of ugly bugs and stuff. I believe there's a fourth star piece over here, which we're about to get. We're just rolling in star pieces. And they're also saying that word a lot. I uh, Yesterday, I blew through 100 coins at that parlor. You believe that? Not next time, man. I'm coming back a winner. The odds favor me now. Uh, yeah, this game is just so rough and rugged and rigged and all that jazz. Go over here, talk to this guy. Listen, this is a huge secret, but I gotta tell someone. I'm a wanted Goomba. I was a thief in another town up until about three months ago. Yeah, good one. Did you steal Link's hat? But then the heat came down. I needed to hide out, so I came to Rogueport. Now, I, I told you, uh, you gotta keep it a secret, okay? Hey, <laughs> I'm so sly. Yeah, he's so sly, he made us keep his secret by asking us nicely. Now we have to obey and he'll get away with his crimes. Uh, I thought there was another star piece over here, but I guess not so. Here's the tradition of Midnight and Beyond not researching games before uh, let's play them and just saying, I remember every single thing about every single game that I've played. I don't need to do research. I'll just remember from my previous playthroughs and I'll, I'll just be just A-OK. -okay. We don't have to worry about it. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> I apologize that this video has been going on for a bit long. I just want to make sure we actually get ample stuff done in this episode. So it just seems like something has actually been done. Uh, this room, we can't really do anything here yet. This is actually right here is where Professor Frankly is ever so conveniently because the other place is blocked off to us. This, however, is something that we're going to do to end off the episode. Whoa, whoa, hold up now. You're an outsider. Past this point is the turf of Ishnayal, hand of the Robos. It's 10 coins to pass through. You try to pass without paying, and I'm afraid I'll have to whip you, but good. So you could either not pay, which just makes this place blocked off to you. You could pay him, but you're going to have to pay him every single time you go through here. Or you could try and take him on. If you win, you will never have to pay him throughout the rest of the game. If you fail, though, you're in for some deep doo-doo. What? you got to be kidding. You think you could fight your way through here? I'm going to make you eat your words, tough guy. Let's get this party started. I probably should have healed at the end before this. So like I said, you could have your party members take hits for you. So I'm going to switch Goombella to the front. And unfortunately, she can't do anything but tattle because her head bonk will go ahead and attack the enemy from above. And as you can see, he has that spear, which makes it so we cannot jump on him. So Mario is the only one who could hurt him with his hammer. So Goombella is just going to be a meat shield, more or less. And for the sake of my voice actor's sanity, I'm not going to make the voice actor for Goombella do all the tattle logs. This is another thing I'm going to 100%. I'm actually going to do the tattle log. So you'll actually see more of the tutorial party member throughout the LP. So I hope you enjoy that because a lot of them are actually pretty funny. And I just sort of like the fulfillment of getting every single character tattled on. So let's get things started. All you got to do is line up with cursor, press A immediately afterwards to get the stylish. That's Gus. He's super annoying and tries to take tolls from everyone. Max HP is 20, attack is 3, and defense is 0. All in all, he's pretty tough. Oh, and I've told you a million times, that pointy spear of his hurts if you stomp on it. I wonder if this guy watches people pass 365 days a year. Talk about a workaholic. So now we're going to have Mario go ahead and use the hammer. Pew, 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 pew. And I like how the background actually changes to the specific area that we're in. So we have that door in the back. And hello, that is a good singing guard right there. That is the super guard. The regular guard would have had Mario crouch down and would have said nice. But you saw him spin around did great. I, that's because I pressed the B button instead of the A button. Unfortunately, we didn't really get to see the full effect of that because he did not attack us physically. But we'll see more of that as time goes on. So I'm going to have Goombella defend so we can at least reduce the damage that she's going to take if she gets hurt. And Mario is going to do the hammer once again. I hope he really, I really hope he does the uh, charge attack so we can show off the uh, super guard. Or you could just keep on attacking Goombella, sure. Uh, just have her defend. 
And Mario is going to use the hammer. I've done this way a million single times. Like every single playthrough, I always fight him right off the bat. So I'm not worried about losing it. And I'm having trouble with the super guard. It's been a long single time, but like the way I've done it is that the super guard has like one fourth of a frame in which you could hit the button. So it's more difficult to pull off than the regular guard, but it's more worth it because you uh, reflect all damage and you even do uh, one damage to the opponent when they hit you physically. So that is why I've always like just trained myself to do the regular, to do the super guard and never, oh, that's very lucky. This is the attacks might miss. So as you can see, sometimes uh, random things can happen on the field. So in our first battle with Lord Crump, you saw that the uh, background behind us fell on top of us and took damage from it. That is just something that can happen. It says random stage hazard. Sometimes it hurts us, sometimes it hurts the enemy. In this case, it hurt him and now he's dizzy and will sometimes miss. So many stinking things we have to go over. Oh my stinking god. Go ahead and do that once more. Never seen that sprite before. Not mean for that to rhyme. Uh, does that once more. Goombella's running low on HP. Uh, do not want to run away. Defend. Does not seem to be doing that much for us, but we'll just keep on doing it. Uh, the bucket did also one HP of damage for us. Not that. Not gonna make that much of a difference in the end, but we'll see. And he misses, hooray! Uh, he's back to normal, so we're gonna defend. That bucket pretty much saved us, because usually I just rely on super guards the entire time, but since I seem to be failing on them over and over this time around, I'll need to get back into learning the basics. Oh jeez, well, I'm down to 2 HP, so I will switch over to Mario now. Hopefully I can keep Goombella alive. Thankfully it's not like typical RPGs where if Mario and Goombella, if like one of them's unconscious, then they can't get experience. Uh, uh, by the way, if Mario dies, then it's game over. If the party member dies, then you can still continue the fight. But they do share experience, so as long as one of them is alive, they'll both get the experience, so you don't have to worry about that. Which is very, very nice and useful, because it's like one of my least favorite things about RPGs, just having to keep all four party members alive to keep their HP, or their levels, even all that jazz. But whatever, just a very minor thing, because I always like super, uh, critical about those sorts of things. Huh, that hurt? You have no chance of beating me, trust me, so you better run. Yeah, if you don't seriously, it'll be a game over for you. You can choose to run. Like, I was telling us how to run because, like, they the game really doesn't expect you to do this fight right here. So, as long as he doesn't hurt Goombella, then we should be good to go. Because there's no way he's going to do enough damage to take us down this one hit. That'd be amazing. Come on, let's just finish this fight off with a Super Guard uh, Reflect attack. That would be amazing. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, unfortunately, we can't. I'm not all Oh, I'm at 1 HP. Jesus. Okay, let's finish this fight before I mess anything up. There you go. Very difficult fight done very early, and in return, we get a lot of stinging star points really early on. Crud, you dumb video game heroes always pull this stuff. It's ridiculous. You think violence solves everything, don't you? Huh, don't you? And he's on out of here. So because of that, we could access this point at any point throughout the rest of the game, and we do not have to pay him or fight him ever again which is very, very useful. But now that's taken care of, I think Mario and Goombella have earned themselves a night at the inn. So we're gonna end things off right here. Next time on Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, we are gonna meet with Professor Frankly and talk about The Thousand Year Door, the legendary map, and Princess Peach's whereabouts. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. Quite literally, good night, get it?